and welcome to ECCB Connects, a program produced by the Eastern Caribbean Central Bank to share with you who we are, what we do, and how we serve you. This week, we bring you part two of the discussion on key banking terms. Stay with us for the details after this message. The seventh annual Growth and Resilience Dialogue 2023 welcomes you to two days of enlightening healthcare discussions and innovative tech ideas and exhibitions. Register for free via ECCB's website to join companies, specialists, thought leaders, disruptors and transformers that are passionate about issues that are key to your health and well care needs and challenges. The fact of the matter is that almost 8 in 10 deaths in our region are attributed to non-communicable diseases. Connected. Communication specialist Shermalon Kirby continues the conversation with Baldwin Taylor, General Manager of the Bank of Montserrat and Secretary of the ECCU Bankers Association about banking terms you should know as it relates to loans and credit cards. We always hear about collateral. You go to apply for a loan and you're asked to have collateral. When we have collateral, there are various forms of collateral. Um, we can use cash as a form of collateral. Um, we can take a bill of sale over a property of, um, of, over an asset, for example, a vehicle, or we can take a mortgage over a property. All those are forms of, of collateral. And what those are is really the security that the bank will hold for a, facil um, a facility that it will give, give to a customer. So in the event of default, the bank may choose to either, if, if it is using cash, to use the cash to liquidate the debt that it has. If it has a bill of sale over a vehicle, it would use that bill of sale to be able to sell the vehicle and recoup its funds. Likewise, if it has a mortgage over the property, it would use that mortgage to give it the power to be able to sell the property to rec recoup the funds. And we must um, be mindful at all times that when a financial institution lends money to a borrower. It is not the bank's money that it is lending. It is the depositor's funds that it is lending. And the bank has a right to safeguard the deposits of all of its depositors. In doing a lending, it tries its best to assess a credit as best as possible to ensure that that credit will not go into default. However, there are times when circumstances change, somebody may lose their job, um, two people may be paying a mortgage, one partner may, may pass away and the other one may find it difficult to pay it, or, or something would have happened to the borrower. They would have invested in a particular business that did not go well. Um, COVID could have come and, and that business could have, have, have collapsed. Um, the bank has a responsibility to, to recoup the funds. And, and it is doing that purely because it is the, 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 the deposits of um, its depositors and it has an obligation to safeguard the deposits of its board, of its depositors. That's a, a solid point there, Mr. Taylor. I never saw collateral as, as that, where you, you're actually protecting the interests of other depositors. That so is, that's correct. All of us back there at, at commercial banks, and we want to know that while we receive interest from our savings, that our savings are protected. Yes, people tend to ignore the fact that um, monies that are lent to, to borrowers 
belong to depositors. And banks, the, the banks operate on a simple premise. We take money from depositors, we unlend it to, 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 to potential borrowers, they pay us back with a return, we pay the depositors their interest rate, and the bank takes a margin to cover the cost of its, its normal operations. This is banking 101, how banks generally tend to operate. We're sticking with the loans, and of course, same along the line of collateral. When you take a loan, you're charged interest, as you just mentioned. Annual percentage rate, what does this mean? The annual percentage rate really refers to the rate that is quoted on a mortgage at the time the mortgage is taken out. So somebody may, may, may take out a mortgage um, and they will want to know, well, what is the rate that I'm getting that mortgage at? Um, some people, one bank may tell you it's at 4.5, another one may tell you at five, another one may tell you, tell you at six. And it is for the borrower to determine um, what is best suited for them at, at the time. Um, the, the annual um, mortgage, uh, mortgage rate really refers to the rate that is quoted on that facility. Um, I, should, I should add at this point in time, under no circumstance should a customer take out a lending um, and when they sign the commitment letter for the bank that the interest rate is not quoted in that. It has to be communicated to the customer that I am lending you X for Y period of time, and this is the interest rate that I'm going to charge you for the, 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 the monies that I've lent you over the period of time. Can this rate be negotiated? Yes, it can. Um, the interest rates, th there's probably a lot more latitude um, to negotiate those than, than there is at this point in time to negotiate the rates on, on deposits. Um, and there are a number of factors that will be taken into consideration when negotiating a rate with a financial institution. One is, is the history that the customer has had with the bank. Um, it can be a customer with a very long history um, that has serviced all the debt um, in an impeccable manner. Um, it, it, it depends on the size of the mortgage. Um, if it is a very big mortgage, then the customer may, may, may choose to negotiate a, slight, a slightly better rate, um, depending on the collateral that is being provided. If, for example, a customer is taking out a loan and they are telling you, you know what, I, I have $250,000 on my account. I need a loan for 100000 but I don't want to touch my savings. I would prefer to secure that loan with my deposits. Cash is probably the best form of collateral that, 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 that you can have. And, and the customer may choose to want to negotiate a slightly better rate because um, the risk to the bank is, is minimal. Um, and, and interest rates, I should add, is, is a function of, of risk. Where the risk is high, the rate is high. Where the risk is low, the rate can be, 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 be lowered. So that brings us to the other two terms, fixed rate and floating rates. So while you can negotiate and you can agree on, a, on a, an interest rate at the start, can that change over time? Yes, yes, the interest rate can change over time. Um, a, a bank can agree to grant a mortgage or any type of loan at a particular interest rate, but all loans are reviewed periodically and circumstances are taken into consideration. Um, if the risk associated with a lending has increased significantly, then the bank would have to increase the rate. And as I would have indicated earlier, interest rate is a function of risk. The higher the risk, the higher the, the, the rate. The lower the risk, the lower the, the, the rate. So if, if a customer, um, the, the, the circumstances have, have improved, they, they've paid it very well, um, the bank is satisfied that um, you you uh, a lower risk to us. There's opportunity to re negotiate negotiate downwards. Likewise, if the risk has increased significantly, um, you you had one person who was in very stable employment, for example, with government. That person has now gone into self employment. There's there's no history of of monies being deposited to the account. The bank may look to to increase the rate. Um, on the customer because the risk associated with that facility has now increased. So this change over time, depending on circumstances, that's what you call a floating rate? I, I wouldn't say that is, 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 is called a, a floating rate. Now, 
what I spoke to a while ago is, is really the banks reviewing their facilities, whether it is annually, whether it is every three years, um, banks tend to, to review their facilities. Um, I, I, you're probably referring to, to um, an adjustable rate where the bank may decide at some point in time, um, I can give you a, an adjustable rate that um, for the first three years while your business is, is, is really going through the starter period, um, I can offer you an interest rate of, of 4%, for example, 4.5% or 5%. Once things improve and the business is on a better footing, then that rate would increase to, to 6% or 7%. Um, and, and that is available with, with commercial banks that um, we, can, we can work with you with the understanding that um, you, you pay X amount um, for the, the first three years of the mortgage. And then after that, then we can we will charge you X plus one or X plus two percent um, from year three to, to to year ten, and all those are the various types of rates that the banks would work with, um, and their advantages and disadvantages of of each of them. Let's now move to credit cards. You apply for a card, and you receive a statement at the end of your billing cycle. We talk about billing cycle later on. However, let's focus on balance for now. When you, when you're, you see the balance on your statement, what fees are included in that balance? Okay, when you get your credit card statement at the, the end of the billing period, um, the fees that will be included in that are the, the interest. Um, all credit cards come with, with an interest rate. Um, and the, the, the banks would charge you interest based on, on um, the outstanding balance on, on, on the credit card. So if a customer has used has a, a credit card limit of $10,000 and they have used um, $5,000 of that amount and they have not paid it, then um, they would have to pay the interest on the amount of the, of the limit that they have used. That is why some people tend to want to pay off the balance before the end of the billing period um, so that they don't, they don't pay interest. Um, that would be included in it. Um, some people tend to, to take cash advances. Um, there are cash advance fees and those will be reflected on, on those as well. Cash advance, that's an important one. What does this mean? Generally, when a credit card is, is issued, it, it is issued with the understanding that, that persons would more often than not use those to pay for goods and services, be it at merchants or online. Um, so somebody may be shopping on Amazon, they may use their credit card, um, or they may go into the supermarket and they may pay, pay for the goods at the supermarket or pay for a service at, at, at a hair salon or barbershop using their credit card. Some people, however, tend to want to go to the ATM to withdraw monies from the credit card. Once they use that credit card at the ATM, then there would be what we call a cash advance fee um, that is applied by, by the, the one, the processor who will, will charge their fee. So whether it's Visa or MasterCard, there will be a charge from Visa or MasterCard, and some of the banks may also add, add on to that fee, their own fee for the cash advance. This is, then is an additional fee to your regular credit card fee. That would be correct. That would be correct. Balance transfer. Balance transfer is, is really speaks to somebody switching from one credit card provider to another credit card provider. So I have a credit card with company A or bank A, um, and they're charging me 21% um, um, interest on my credit card. I may want to switch to, to um, company B that is charging me 19% um, because I'm, I'm trying to cut my costs and manage my funds better. So I want a, a credit card that is paying a lower interest rate. The, the balance transfer really refers to transferring the outstanding balance on one credit card to another credit card. We spoke earlier about the billing cycle, grace period, late fee, they're all connected. 
but let's take them one at a time. The billing cycle, how is this worked out? The billing cycle is usually, um, as it relates to the credit card, a one month period. So you are billed, um, be it the 28th of the month or the, 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 the 30th of the month, um, and then you would be billed on the 30th of, of the following months. So the interest period would be worked out from one billing period to the next billing period, whatever date. And, and it, it is not a fixed date for all banks. Some banks may have it on the 25th, some may have it on the 28th, some may have it on the 10th of the month. Um, but it is really worked out from one billing period to the next billing period. And if you don't pay, at the end of your billing period, I guess that's where the grace period kicks in. That would be correct. And, and it, some, some processors may tell you that if you don't pay your, your minimum payment um, by a particular date, there would be a, a fee applied. So they tell you that, that your, your minimum payment is $200 and it has to be paid by, by the, the 28th of the month. Some people may give a grace that if it's not paid within three days or five days, um, a, a fee is not applied. Um, others will tell you if it's it not paid by that particular date, then then the 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 the, um, the, pe the penalty, the late payment penalty, will be applied. So, for example, if I can use a loan again to to explain the the um, late payment penalty, some institutions may tell you, well, I give you five days grace period after the the the, the date that the loan is due for payment. So, if you've paid it, the the payment is due on the thirtieth of the month, and you've not been able to pay it, and you pay it on the third of the month, they may not charge you a late payment penalty. But if you pay it on the tenth of the month, you will get the late payment charge which is an additional charge to an your- addi Additional charge that a borrower may want to avoid. But a grace period gives you sort of a little break. A, a little window because um, somebody may have a billing period, uh, um, a, a billing date of, for example, the, the 28th of the month. And you may have an employer who will pay the employees on the 30th of the month. Um, and some people may find it difficult to make the payment on the 20th when I get paid on, on the 30th. That grace really tries to cater to those individuals. Mr. Taylor, you have helped us to understand some important banking terms as it relates to our savings, loans, and credit cards. Before we wrap up, banking, of course, we know is an important service in our region. However, sometimes people, customers feel like they're being treated unfairly by banks. What's your response to that? I, I think I want to conclude by, by saying to, to, to viewers and listeners that any relationship that you enter into, into with a financial institution, it should not be a blind relationship. You need to understand what you are getting into. Um, and, and where you don't understand, I have seen time and time again where people come in, for example, for loan facilities, um, and they're so eager to, to get the loan that they tend not to pay attention to the closing details that are being communicated to them by the lender. It is important for people to pay close attention to what the financial institution is saying to them. It is important for persons to, to ask questions if they are not they don't understand um, what the bank is saying because what you do not want is to sign the dotted line, commit yourself to something and not fully understanding what you are committing yourself to. Ask the questions, get clarification so that there is no misunderstanding between yourself and the financial institution. And more often than not, if that is done, the, the, the perception that um, banks are treating people badly will be avoided. Mr. Taylor, Thank you very much for speaking with us on ECCB Connects. Thank you, Shemalon, and thank you for giving me the opportunity to be able to explain those to our customers. Celebrating ECCB at 40. Did you know that there are eight member states of the Eastern Caribbean Currency Union, ECCU, Anguilla, Antigua and Barbuda, Dominica, Grenada, Montserrat, St. Christopher, St. Kitts and Nevis, St. Lucia, and St. Vincent and the Grenadines? Now you know, celebrating ECCB at 40. 
That's it for this episode and the season 21 of ECCB Connects. Thank you for watching. We'll be back in May with a new season of more exciting and informative programs to share with you who we are, what we do, and how we serve you. While we're on break, do stay connected with us on our social media platforms.